All right, so to use the statistics calculator in this section when we're learning about inverse normal distributions, uh, there's a couple of things to understand. So first off, it absolutely will do everything that the calculator will do, but generally speaking, it does things in a slightly different way. And once you understand that different way, it makes sense and is a, generally a little bit more uh, sensible. So uh, let's work on understanding the slightly different way of uh, the thinking is with the stats calculator. So to work with normal distributions, uh, we need to go over to the distributions menu and the very first item that shows up is normal. When we open that up, it shows us a nice diagram of a normal distribution, allows us to change the mean and standard deviation that it's working with, though it of course defaults to a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Over on the left, there is uh, changes to the way values are input. So the default is input between two values. And you can change these points here to change those values, that's fine. Uh, and whatever those input values are along the x-axis, it will calculate the total amount of area under the curve between them. All right, the calculator only works with that mode. But in addition, here, we also have a mode where we're only doing areas to the left or areas to the right. And the shading in blue is what it's calculating the probability of. Now, there's also input boxes here on the right-hand side for calculating area versus calculating x values. Calculating area is the same as calculating a probability because the probability is defined as the area under the curve. If we switch to calculate x value, that's the equivalent of inverse norm on the calculator. So calculate area is the same as normal CDF. Calculate x value is the same as inverse norm. Now, not much happens when you click these two. In fact, the only thing that changes is when you are in the mode for calculate area, it's these two boxes, the z-score boxes or the x-value boxes, those are editable. So you can change these uh, as you wish. But if you're in the uh, input and x or calculate an x-value mode, those become disabled. And it's this output value that is, uh, becomes enabled to edit at that point. So what you can do is you can now uh, calculate an inverse norm by using this input value. So you input the probability and it will tell you the uh, x values or z scores uh, that would be associated with it. So uh, it's pretty easy to work with. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that uh, the calculator generally only works in this mode with areas to the left. So in the calculator, you input uh, a probability value here, and it would output this value, which would be the boundary for the area to the left. But here, you can al actually also do an area to the right. That's a very nice thing that you can be able to do, or an area between. So uh, most of the time in this section, however, you'll only ever use areas to the left or right, just depending on the context of the problem. And I've got a couple over here that we can work with to get an idea of how they're done. So the first question says, the SAT score in a particular year, uh, those scores were normally distributed with a mean of 977 and a standard deviation of 85. So we're not using a standard normal distribution, it's a good idea just to go ahead and change those input values. So 977, if I hit update, uh, you, when you change these, you do need to hit this update button. Um, that's the center value of the distribution, 977. So the mean is centered in the middle of the distribution. The standard deviation is 85. If you change that value to 85 and hit update, then what's going to happen is these tick marks adjacent to the 977 are no longer going to be counting in increments of 1. They'll be counting in increments of 85, which is that standard deviation. All right, so 
uh, the question then is, what score is the lowest you could receive and still place in the top 5% of scores overall? Okay, so the top 5%, first thing we need to do is just decide if we're dealing with areas to the left or areas to the right. So since we're working with the top 5%, that's going to be an area to the right because we want an area in this upper tail of the distribution. That's the top 5%. If it was indicating something like the lower 10% or something of that nature, we would use this mode with an area to the left. All right, but we've decided it's an area to the right. Now, what we want is the total area under the curve to be 5%. So right now, it's about 6.5%. So this value is going to be a little bit smaller than, or I guess the value goes up uh, when the probability goes down here. But that's pretty close to what it actually would be. So that's pretty close to 5%. Now, the thing is, it's going to be really hard to get this dot uh, when we are dragging that dot to land exactly where 5% should be. So you can actually just edit this box and insert the probability, then hit Calculate, and it will come up with the uh, value that separates that boundary. So let's round to the nearest integer. So um, 1,117 is this value right here, and it separates the lower 95% of the data from the upper 5%. So uh, this answer here would be 1,117. The next question, uh, if the ACT scores in a particular year are normally distributed with a mean of 24.5, so now we have a new mean, so let's go ahead and change that and a standard deviation of 3.8. Go ahead and change that, and I'll update, and now you'll see the mean, or the distribution is centered about the uh, mean, which is 24.5, and each of these tick marks are now off by 3.8, that standard deviation. And the question here is, what is the minimum score that would place a student in the 73rd percentile? So a percentile, uh, a percentile is kind of a nice thing to work with here because it's always an area to the left. You don't ever have to worry about percentiles being areas to the right or between or anything of that nature. So area to the left, we'll switch to that mode. And since it's the 73rd percentile, I want this percentage down here to be 73%. So this uh, score right here would be the score that, 73 per, that is better than 73% of all scores in that year. And that particular score shows up here as 26.8, we'll round to one decimal because that's what the mean and standard deviation is. So over here, the answer is 26.8.